For those of us who backed the Kickstarter for Series 1 of Action Force created by Bobby Valor and Valorverse, uh, we've had the product in our hands now for around a month. And the response to this incredible toy line has just been almost overwhelming, but it is very, very well deserved. The innovation and the interesting ideas that Bobby has bled his heart and soul into this toy line really, really shines through. And these are the figures that we've always wanted. This is the closest that I've come to experiencing a new toy line back in the 80s when I was a child. It is that expansive, it's that exciting. And I'm not exaggerating when I say that Action Force is the action figure industry equivalent of when Steve Jobs introduced the first iPhone. It's that groundbreaking. And in today's video, we're gonna discuss what to look forward to with Series 2. Stay tuned. Come with me, toy fans. Hey toy fans, my name is Tony and welcome back to the Analog Toys YouTube channel. Now the first thing I need to uh, impress upon you is that Series 2 of Valiverse Action Force has been split in uh, to like 2A and 2B. So within 2A there are four core characters and in 2B there are three core characters, a troop builder, a weapons pack and a gear pack. And these items are going to ship at different times, which is why if you go to the Valiverse.com website, there is a link in the description below, um, you can't order 2A and 2B together because there are separate um, shipping requirements. So Series 2A will ship in February this year, with Series 2B hopefully shipping in May of this year. So first of all, let's get stuck in and have a look at the core characters available in Series 2A. And first up, we have Sergeant Slaughter version 2. And I don't have anything against the original Sergeant Slaughter that came out in Series 1, but I much prefer the look of version 2 Sarge. Here we get a sleeveless version of the Sarge in a tank top. He's got that awesome looking like nickel-plated grenade launcher and some additional web gear, which, you know, the original figure was kind of, he had a knife, he had a sidearm, and he was dressed in a green coat. This Sarge is like, to me, this is combat Sarge. This is Sarge who's gonna go up against the swarm or the garrison. I'm really excited for Sergeant Slaughter version two. Next up, we have Rollout, who is the first African-American character introduced into the Valiverse Action Force toy line. And I'm really pleased to see this cultural diversity in, in the line. Um, we did get kind of somewhat of it in series one with the troop builders having alternate heads so they could be either Caucasian or African-American. And then obviously in series three, we're gonna get the female figures and Eclipse is, I believe, uh, Ecuadorian. But in basic terms, Rollout is similarly equipped to Condor. There's not a lot kind of different here. Okay, his sleeves are kind of rolled up to the bicep, not halfway up the forearm. There are some different colors used, but I don't have any issue with that at all. You know, this looks like a uniformed member of Action Force. He's got the team insignia on his body armor. And as much as the original Paintmaster photos look good, when I first saw this photo that Bobby posted on social media showing the figure in the packaging, I was stunned. The face sculpt and the face printing on this figure blew me away. And I can't wait to add Rollout to my Action Force collection. Now the next figure available in Series 2A is someone that I'm an enormous fan of. And that is Duster, AKA Tim Kennedy. Tim Kennedy is a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt. He's a professional fighter. He's fought in the UFC and he's also an active duty Green Beret. The guy is basically the modern day Captain America. And I'm super excited for issue six of the Action Force comic because that's gonna be centered on Duster, AKA Tim Kennedy. And I really hope that the character's portrayal in that comic is quite stoic and sincere and somewhat like the character of Captain America. Tim Kennedy is dressed in some olive drab pants and you can see that the 
bottom of the pants leg is not tucked into the boot. Whereas, you know, all the figures barring the swarm in series one all had boots and, you know, a boot split rotation uh, joint there. This really changes up the look of the character and affords a lot more possibilities going forward. So there is one less point of articulation because he doesn't have the boot cut, but that doesn't matter because with a pair of disc rocker ankles and thigh swivel, the figures still have the same posability. Like this, this is a quite redundant piece of articulation that is not necessary. I love Duster's 511 tactical vest. It is very similar to the vest that I wore in Iraq, which is why Bobby used that vest for the Desert Rat figure that we'll talk about later on. It's not exactly the same. Like this vest is exactly the same to what Tim Kennedy wore. It's a, made by a company called 511 Tactical. I wore a vest manufactured by a company called Paraclete and it's slightly different, but it's close enough for toy purposes. I like the fact that the patch in the center of the body armor has got the Action Force unit insignia. Tim here also has a radio and his weapon is just awesome. Both of them actually, all three of them I should say. Obviously he's got his uh, Gerber strong arm knife he has his 509 Edge pistol, which I believe is the first time this pistol's ever been created in toy form. But then, like the SCAR is an awesome assault rifle, but a SCAR with a 40 millimeter underslung grenade launcher? This dude's taking no prisoners, I'm telling you. I'm a massive fan of Tim Kennedy and what he represents. And anyone who follows me on Patreon and has kind of seen a few of like the motivational videos I've been doing where I'm trying to get back into shape to be Desert Rat, um, you know, and I'm very humbled that some people say that those videos I've been making for Patreon have inspired them. Well, I want you guys to know that to get my own inspiration, I watch a lot of Tim Kennedy stuff. I watch his Instagram videos, I watch his YouTube videos. This guy is an absolute legend of the military, um, of mixed martial arts, and I think it's just awesome that a guy like that is being brought into this toy line. So. I can't wait to add Duster to the collection. Finally, in Series 2A, we get a Troop Builder. This is the Scarab. These are the sort of heavy ground infantry element of the Swarm. Now, apart from the head sculpt, all the other parts to make this figure have been reused or borrowed, whatever you want to call it, from other figures in the range. So the basic body is that of the Swarm with the Bone Collector's body armor just painted in black and yellow. But honestly, I don't care. I love the Swarm, I love the Scarabs, I love the Wasp Raiders, and if Bobby can find interesting ways to bring us three, four, five, six more different variations of this figure, different elements of the Swarm, I'm going to just lap them up all day long because it's the most striking figure in the range. They look terrific as troop builders. And once again, where I've ordered, like I ordered two Tim Kennedys because I want to keep one in the box. Um, but I only ordered one version two of Sergeant Slaughter and only one rollout. I've ordered three Scarabs because I'm going to build myself a swarm army. And this variety just gets me even more excited about that prospect. Now we get to series 2B, and the first thing that I'm really, really excited about and I'm gonna discuss is the Troop Builder and the gear pack. And the Delta Trooper here is the same Troop Builder figure that we got in series one, where we got the Special Ops, the Urban Warfare, the Riot Warfare, but this figure's been done in olive green. And the Delta gear pack that goes along with it is you know the body armor, belt, pistol, and knife from the Duster figure, along with a backpack, um, the helmet, which you know has come in a lot of gear packs, and an M4, the first M4 that's introduced in the line, an M4 that is also fitted with um, a red dot laser pointer and a suppressor, and the magazines for this rifle resemble real world plastic M4 magazines and not the metal ones that we received in Series One. And I can already picture how badass these figures are gonna look. I've ordered four of these because I want this to be 
I want the Delta Troopers to be a Delta Force squad, and their commander is going to be Duster, the American Green Beret leading his own squad of Special Forces troops. I'm telling you right now, if you sleep on the Delta Troopers and the Delta Gear Packs, you're going to regret it. I only ordered four. I'm sure there are some people out there that have ordered 12. Now, when it comes to the core characters available in Series 2, the first one that I'm going to discuss is Desert Rat. And because this is literally my own action figure, you know, this character is Tony Roberts. You can see it here on the file card. It's based on me. The head is sculpted to look like myself. The figure design is based on photographs of me when I served in Iraq in the late 2000s. But I'm not as pretentious enough to just sit here and tell you guys that, you know, it's the best figure in the line. You need to go out and get this. Because <clears throat> really, you need to go out and buy the entire line. Honestly, you need all of these figures. But what I will say is that Desert Rat is the golden thread that links the modern Valiverse Action Force toy line to the original Palatoy toy line of the early 1980s. The name is inspired by a character from Series 1 of Action Force in 1982. A very fitting name, really, since most of the operational tours I conducted were in the desert and my outfit looks very desert-esque. And the most exciting thing for me about this figure is that Bobby's given this figure exclusive packaging, inspired by the original colour scheme used by Palatoy in the early 1980s. A lot of the equipment used here has been borrowed from Tim Kennedy. Uh, the legs of the figure are the same legs that were made for Tim Kennedy, the body armour, the belt. But what is unique about this figure is the shamar uh, around his neck and the rifle. Not only is it unique to this figure, it was unique to me when I carried it in Iraq because I had heavily customised this. You can see in this photo here, I've got an Iraqi interpreter on my team just off to the left of me and you can see how much longer the barrel of his rifle is compared to mine. That was the way my rifle was issued to me. But I went out and, and spent about $900 on a short barrel because it was much better suited for me as I frequently was getting in and out of vehicles, I was moving through buildings, I wanted a shorter barrel. And I did a few other things to kind of customise my rifle by giving it an ACOG sight, some rear flip-up iron sights and things like that. And Valiverse have just done an amazing job of recreating my rifle in action figure form. I hope I get to see this rifle in a future weapons pack because I would like to see it produced by Valiverse, but perhaps in some slightly different colours or something like that. The next figure available in Series 2B is another troop builder. And once again, I've gone out and bought four of these as well. And that is the Garrison Cavalry, Kerrick's Army. Kerak was like the sleeper hit of Series 1 for me. I bought every figure in Series 1, but when he arrived, he was the one that surprised me the most, in a good way. When I actually got the figure out and started to pose him and his unique appearance was stunning. And the fact that he's getting now his own troopers who have a wonderful design. Like I love the helmet on these figures. Again, a lot of the equipment here is also used by Desert Rat and Tim Kennedy, but it's been manufactured in different colors. But the main assault rifle is very different and I'm excited about this. This is a G36, I think it's called. Um, a very sophisticated weapon system made by Heckler & Koch. I have fired one of these once in my life. And it's really nice to see this awesome assault rifle in the Action Force toy line. Now, before I discuss the last core character, I do need to say that we're also getting another weapons pack in Series 2. And you can see from the image here that weapons pack Charlie is packed in with a ton more weapons. Very, very excited for this. I love the fact that it's got the same M4 from the Delta gear set, but it's been painted in different colors. I've had to order a few of these sets because I need multiples of that particular weapon. Now the last figure available in Series 2B is one that I'm gonna buy multiples of because I'm gonna use parts and pieces of this figure to make my own Desert Rat version too. Trigger is a badass, he looks something like a 
CIA operator or some elite contractor type with his, you know, backwards baseball cap and his beard and his sunnies. Trigger looks like 90% of the employees of the Blackwater private security company that I came across in Iraq. They all had this look, you know, the Oakley sunglasses, the baseball cap and the beard. I say that as I'm laughing because, you know, it, it just became such a cliche. But when you bring it into toy form, it makes for a very unique character and I love the look of this guy. This is the third sleeveless kind of singlet wearing figure we've had in the line after uh, Kerak in Series 1 and then Version 2 Sarge in Series 2A. And the fact that Bobby has not given this particular figure body armour, he's given him what I call webbing, what the British military called webbing or load carrying equipment, has got me really excited because when I was in the Special Forces, I wouldn't wear body armour all the time. Like certain operations, it's just not practical to wear body armour. And I would wear webbing or belt kit. So I'm really, really excited for this particular accessory. Trigger's armed with a saw, but this time we're getting a painted version, which is really, really cool. And another unique accessory in the form of a headset with microphone. And to make my Desert Wrap version too, I've bought extras of these figures because I'm basically going to split Trigger at the waist joint, split Desert Rat at the waist joint and give Desert Rat the camouflage pants. And then basically strip Desert Rat of almost all of his equipment, barring the Shamar, and then put Trigger's equipment on him and a helmet. So Desert Rat version 2 is going to have the saw, he's going to have the uh, ear protection, a helmet, and the webbing, just like I used to wear in the SAS. We're looking down the barrel of a really impressive lineup for Series 2, and we're not done yet. There's also the exclusive. This Night Ops Steel Brigade figure is exclusive to Big Bad Toy Store, and while it isn't a new figure as such, it is you know, the Steel Brigade figure simply repainted. Well, I don't actually want to use the word simply repainted because the color scheme here is gorgeous. This really, really pops. And I particularly like the exclusive packaging that Valiverse has designed for this figure. I wouldn't say this is my favorite figure coming up in Series 2, but it's definitely the coolest. Pre-orders for Action Force Series 2 are closing very soon. I don't have an exact date for you. Um, we will be getting that information from Valiverse very soon, but I would assume it's around the end of the month, if not just a little bit after. So don't sleep on this, guys. Now, I've seen a lot of people complaining on the internet because they missed out on Series 1. And before anyone tries to point the finger at me and say, you know, I've complained about Hasbro before with things selling out, Action Force Series 1 was available for pre-order for almost two years. And then once the pre-orders shipped, product got put up on the website. And yes, it only lasted a few weeks, but it's not like Hasbro where they put up a pre-order and it lasts minutes. I mean, just yesterday they put up a pre-order for a three and three quarter inch scale vintage collection Boba Fett and it sold out in minutes. So if you're one of those people complaining on the internet because you missed out on series one, it's your own fault because you slept on this line. If you were sitting around waiting for some YouTube reviews to tell you whether these figures were good or not before you purchased them, and now that you've, you've missed the boat, it's your own fault. But just know that, you know, there's been a load of awesome reviews put on YouTube. Everyone from Talk Art and Shardimus and Retroblasting and Two Cents Toys, Kato's uh, Toy Reviews. This line is incredible. I don't know how much more proof you need. So if you don't want to miss out on Series 2, you need to head over to the Valiverse.com website and place your pre-orders today. There will be an opportunity later down the line when the product ships from the factory to the Valiverse headquarters. Bobby will always get additional product and put it, and put it up on the website. But you're taking a big risk if you're going to wait for that and, you know, not be able to guess how quickly that stuff's going to sell out. Pre-order it now. You haven't got to wait two years like we did last time. Series 2A is coming in February and Series 2B is coming in May. The way this toy line is just blowing up all over the place. I'm so happy for Bobby, man. He has put 
years of work. He's gambled his life savings, and it's so incredible to see this paying off. Hasbro really kicked themselves in the dick when they let this guy go from their company. He is the best toy designer working today, and this is the most exciting modern action figure line to come along since Toy Biz first introduced Marvel Legends 20 years ago. If you did miss out on Series 1, go and have a look on eBay and see if you can pick the figures up. You can, they're on there, but people want $200 a pop for them. Don't pay those scalper prices for Series 2. Place your pre-order today and don't miss out. And five years from now, you as a collector will look back with pride when you say that you got in on this line at the ground floor. So head over to the Valiverse.com website to place your pre-order today. I'm Tony from Analog Toys and thank you for watching. Cheers.